Excitement is building at Starbase as SpaceX announces the first estimated launch date for Flight 10. On Pad A, workers are busy in selling the spacecraft's new quick disconnect system. This is a crucial part of increasing support for future missions. All engines for Crew-37 have been fully assembled and they are now ready for testing and launch. NASA has revealed the next phase of its commercial crew program. The flight schedule and crew for Crew-11 have been officially confirmed. This demonstrates the reliability of the Dragon capsule and that SpaceX will continue to send astronauts to the International Space Station. Meanwhile, Boeing's Starliner program is facing difficulties. The spacecraft's next mission has been delayed, indicating that the spacecraft is facing further problems in its long wait to be operational. With each delay, more and more people are wondering what this means for NASA future crewed missions. We are seeing progress and setbacks coexist, a stark reminder of how complex and motivating space exploration is today. Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. Work is still underway to restore Starship to service. We're working hard to restart testing and prepare for the next launch as soon as possible. Some good news has just arrived for SpaceX during this process. A recently leaked notice from the FTC reveals a new projected schedule for the next 10th Starship test flight. The document outlines the mission's objectives. The key detail is the launch date, set for August 4, 2025. FCC updates typically receive less attention than FAA updates. In recent Starship flights, the FCC's anticipated launch date largely matched the actual launch date. This trend makes it important to pay attention to the August 4th date. Some may be upset because it means the flight won't happen in July, but the news isn't all bad news. An early August launch, particularly on the 4th, would demonstrate a swift and successful recovery from the issues surrounding the 36th flight. Given the significant repairs and upgrades required following that failure, an early August launch would demonstrate how hard the SpaceX team has worked and how well they've been able to adapt. This means the remainder of July can be put to good use. During this time, SpaceX can complete all necessary tasks and thoroughly review everything to ensure any previous issues have been fixed. This additional delay will be crucial to increasing the 10th flight's chances of success. What do you think? Will Flight 10 launch on August 4th or on a different day? Let us know your guesses in the comments. I suspect the launch will be on August 7th, as it's a Thursday. SpaceX launches most often on Thursdays, doing so five of the last nine flights. As launch day approaches, preparations at Starbase are intensifying. One of the biggest changes is the choice to use a simpler, static fire mount placed directly on Pad A. This decision is a significant step in streamlining the preparation process. However, there's one important caveat that many may have overlooked. This system still requires a ship's quick disconnect, QD, to support the ship while it's on the launch pad at Pad A. The current ship's QD for Pad A is too high on the tower, making it difficult to work properly with the current setup. Furthermore, the QD booster on the OLM has a completely different interface, which makes things even more complicated. To address this, SpaceX has taken a new approach. A crane lifted a small steel frame and welded it to the rear cover of the QD booster. A close-up image shows that this frame is made to fit the shape of the QD booster cover, with the edges aligned for ease of use. Work to fix this is still underway, as indicated by the scaffolding installed nearby. The new QD system is significantly smaller than the larger, standalone systems typically built for test platforms. This means it's likely a short-term fix for the next static fire test. We believe the system is welded securely enough for testing, but can be removed afterward. This seems likely as the new QD is housed in the rear cover of the QD booster. This location must be easily accessible so the front cover can be opened during booster deployment. In addition to installing the temporary QD frame, SpaceX also made a significant change to the QD booster. A rectangular hole has been drilled into the bottom of the QD booster to allow for a new connection. This hole connects to a pipe exiting the system and the pipe now faces upward. This is likely to assist the new QD booster with fuel or electrical connections. This means the ship's support system will consist of two parts. One part will contain new systems specifically designed for the ship, such as changes to the electrical and fueling systems. The second part will utilize features from the existing QD booster. This will create a combined approach that will speed up the process and reduce the need for major redesigns. The goal is to expedite the change process so testing and launches can resume quickly. The test stand will be installed soon. The test stand has been significantly improved with new legs that help it securely attach to the OLM. 
Changes have also been made to accommodate the ship's Raptor vacuum engine, which differs in size and power from the marine version. Within a few days, the test stand will be lifted and placed on the OLM. The process will likely involve matching the mount to the latest changes to the launch mount. The mount will then be secured in place with bolts and screws, making it easier to disassemble later. That includes the infrastructure. So what's happening with the vehicle? In the previous update, we mentioned that the engines were still being shipped to Megabait 2. On July 11th, two additional Raptor vacuum engines were delivered. This confirms that all engines for Ship 37 have been shipped and are ready to be installed in Megabait 2. All the engines are assembled and ready, so it seems very likely that we'll be conducting a static test firing in the next few days. Absolutely. This still depends on the completion of all installations and checks on Pad A, but things are definitely moving forward. We're very close to seeing another major static test firing at Starbase. Get ready, because that time is coming soon. As for our final update in today's episode, the next Crew Dragon mission, Crew 11, is officially set to launch. NASA and SpaceX plan to launch to the International Space Station on July 31st, 2025. SpaceX says a Falcon 9 rocket will launch Dragon and Crew 11 to the space station no later than Thursday, July 31st, from Pad 39A in Florida. NASA confirmed the date and set a launch time of 12.09 p.m. Final preparations are not yet complete. The earlier launch window comes after the CRS-33 mission, which will propel the ISS into a higher orbit. This action helps keep the station stable and demonstrates teamwork between NASA and SpaceX as they prepare for future missions, such as the planned ISS deorbital vehicle. Crew 11 will have four members. NASA astronaut Zena Cartland will be the commander. Veteran NASA astronaut Mike Frank will be the pilot. JAXA astronaut Kima Yui will serve as the mission specialist. And Russ Cosmos cosmonaut Ole Platonov will be the second mission specialist. Cartman and Platonov will be going into space for the first time. Yui is on its second flight, and Frank is on its fourth. The Dragon spacecraft for this mission is called Endeavor. It is the most used capsule in the Dragon fleet. After completing five missions, the next launch will be Endeavor 6th. This is a significant milestone, because the Dragon capsule was originally approved for only five test flights. Endeavor 6 mission may open the door for future use, with some estimates suggesting it could lead to as many as 15 flights. Endeavor has been updated to have the Drogue 3.1 parachute system, first used in CRS-32. This design features stronger crown material and a new packing system to help control how it opens during descent. Falcon 9 booster B-1094 will assist in the next launch after completing two missions, including Axiom-4 on June 25th. The quick turnaround demonstrates how well SpaceX is doing with launches. Dragon and Falcon 9 will soon be moved to Pad 39A for stacking and final checks. The crew of 11 will be on the ISS for about six months. After docking, the crew of 10 will prepare for their return. Dragon remains crucial in supporting the International Space Station, but its rival, Starliner, faces a much more uncertain future. Since the crewed test flight mission ended, Starliner hasn't flown. People are still wondering whether the next mission will carry astronauts or cargo. We recently learned some new information. At a July 10th press conference for Crew 11, Steve Stitch, who manages NASA's commercial crew program, said that NASA hasn't finished planning the next Starliner flight. He said the next mission will likely be uncrewed and will focus on carrying cargo. The possibility of this type of mission seems to be driven by safety concerns and the need to confirm technical solutions. Starliner has experienced several issues such as helium leaks and problems keeping its thrusters at the right temperature. A cargo mission would allow Boeing and NASA to test important changes in a safer manner. Steve Stitch said, Yes, we're still figuring out whether this will be a cargo flight or not. I'm sure there are many benefits to flying a cargo flight. Can we check all the changes we made to the doghouse on the ground? Should we test them first during the flight? There's a good chance we'll do a cargo flight first. We haven't decided yet, but that's something we need to figure out. NASA plans to launch the next mission early next year. Currently, NASA is gearing up at their White Sands facility in New Mexico. The team is testing new materials to stop helium leaks. They're also looking at how different thruster pulse lengths affect how well the system works. Additionally, they are trying to improve heat management around the thrusters. The ongoing uncertainty surrounding the crewed launch highlights the significant challenges facing Starliner. As the ISS nears the end of its operational life, and SpaceX Dragon continues to launch successfully, Boeing needs to hurry and demonstrate that Starliner can be a viable option for human spaceflight. It remains to be seen whether Starliner will be able to carry astronauts again in the future. Right now, 
Everyone is watching to see what NASA and Boeing do next. That's it for today's episode, and we'll see you in the next one.